Subscribe G8. Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Diane claims that SEC doesn't care about Carly's motives, and both she and Drew are guilty. After running over what happened and Carly claiming she only wanted to help Drew and Michael. Diane claims that from a legal sense, Drew might claim that Carly acted without his knowledge and that he provided no information to her. That, according to Carly, would be a lie. Diane observes that she can claim Drew approached her and asked her to buy stock as a favor without revealing her identity. Carly resists, knowing Drew would never betray her. Diane claims that there is another option. Sam criticizes Christina's priorities. In addition, Diane offers Carly a way out of her SEC predicament. Diane arrives at Carly's to discuss her case. Before they reach there, she asks Carly to catch up with her. Diane chokes on her coffee after Carly reveals Mana and Sunny are getting married. Carly is relieved that Sunny is moving on, but she finds it repugnant that he is doing so with the woman who wrecked her family. Diane describes Sunny as a difficult man, and she doubts Nina can handle a relationship with him. Carly doesn't have the energy to concentrate on Nina just now. When they get to Carly's case, Diane says she has options, but none of them will suit her. According to Diane, Drew is a high-profile acquisition, and the SEC will pay special attention to him. However, a corporate CEO is less relevant than, say, providing the FBI with information about Sonny in exchange for a deal. Carly declares that she will never give up Sunny and inquires as to her alternative options. Diane claims to have none. Carly grumbles that this is her mess, and she will pay for it. Diane acknowledges her understanding and departs. Sam arrives at Alex's house before Christina to meet with her mother. Sam is concerned about her sister, and Alexis is concerned about Molly as well. Sam, perplexed, inquires as to what is going on with Molly and whether she should be concerned. Alexis tells her that it is not life-threatening and believes Molly will inform her soon. Alexis shifts the conversation to Christina. Sam believes the LGBT plus youth shelter Sunny is assisting Christina in establishing could do a lot of good, but she believes Christina is unaware of what she is getting herself into. Christina, now played by Kate Monsey, emerges on cue and declares that she is about to forever change poor Charles. She shows them the building designs she bought, and she's engaged a contractor to help her make some aesthetic adjustments. Sam believes it is a huge remodeling that will raise her property taxes. Sam asks if she's begun fundraising yet, but Christina hasn't because she needs a strategy to display before asking for money. Christina displays the logo, which Alexis adores. Sam believes that employing a graphic designer before hiring an accountant and registering as a nonprofit is premature. Christina wonders if Sam doesn't believe in this initiative or if she doesn't trust in herself. Sam assures Christina that she believes in her and the shelter, but she doesn't seem to comprehend that this will be difficult. Sam claims she'll need professionals on staff to cope with these teenagers, therefore she'll need to hire a psychiatrist. Christina claims to be on her way. Sam believes the order in which she is doing things is incorrect and is perplexed as to why Alexis is silent. Alexis says she believes Christina's vision and ambitions. Sam points out that they've been here before, and Christina has these fantastic ideas and visions that never come to fruition because she never follows through. Christina screams at Sam and excuses herself to answer a phone call from her contractor. Alexis feels Sam was too harsh on Christina, but Sam says she's an adult who needs to know what she's getting herself into. Alexis concurs. But what can she say? The last time she butted into Christina's life, she didn't speak to her for a month. Sam feels proud of her mother for biting her tongue for once. Alexis claims she is working hard to improve. Sam believes that with Alex's help, Christina can pull this off. TJ catches her getting ready for work at Molly and TJ's and suggests she take the day off. She claims she is not ill and that she is not pregnant. DJ informs Molly that they can still raise and establish a family together. 
but it might not look the way they expected. Molly isn't interested in discussing their alternatives right now. TG understands and wishes to concentrate on her. He wonders why she didn't inform him about the symptoms she's been experiencing. Molly claims the agony was not unbearable, while TG claims she was still in pain. He inquires as to why she concealed this information. Molly claims she wasn't concealing, she but rather always had painful it. periods and assumed it was normal. He doesn't understand why she didn't go to the doctor if she wasn't feeling well. Molly doesn't need him to add to her guilt. She already feels bad. She blames herself for disregarding her symptoms and delaying treatment until it was too late. TJ isn't holding it against her, but Molly believes she's let him down. TJ assures her that she has not, and that they are all in this together. Molly informs her that being a woman is different, and she wanted to be able to give him this gift, something other women do every day. Molly says she needs time to accept the fact that she can't. Molly excuses herself from the conversation and walks out. TJ contacts Molly later and leaves a message. He doesn't enjoy how their chat ended, and he apologizes for making her feel alone in this situation. He tells her he loves her and is always there for her. Drew runs into Curtis in Sonny's gym. They put on their gloves to work out, and Drew tells Curtis about his issues with the SEC and how he wants to find a way to disarm Ned. He believes Tracy is Ned's a chill's heel and is looking for dirt on her. Curtis offers to help, but Drew realizes he already has a lot on his plate. Curtis is brought up in the discourse. Curtis believes his experience in Greenland has made him reconsider many things, including whether he should have ended his marriage to Jordan. Curtis admits they spent time together, and Jordan admits she still has feelings for him. He wonders if he gave up on his marriage too soon. Drew proposes that before reevaluating his connection with his ex, he determine the status of his marriage. Curtis claims Portia deceived him and that he owes her nothing. Drew warns out that he could be repeating the same mistake he made with Jordan with Portia. Drew tells him to wait until he is convinced he no longer loves Portia. Curtis cuts him off, saying that love or no love doesn't change what she did. Drew believes it has an impact on his ability to forgive. Drew recognizes his predicament and wishes he could assist. Curtis claims to have. Portia approaches Jordan at the hospital to thank her for her assistance in bringing Trina home. She will be eternally thankful to her. Portia also mentions what Jordan did to assist her with the Oz Haggerty situation, and she expresses regret that she is only now discovering Jordan has been watching out for her family for a long time. Jordan informs Portia that she owes her nothing. Portia believes she should have listened to her intuition and told Curtis the truth. She asks Jordan how she would save her marriage if she were her. She hastily retracts the question and claims she was only concerned about Trina. Jordan is unable to speak about Curtis, but she can about Trina, and she must forgive herself for her errors. She claims that Trina will forgive her in time. Portia praises Jordan once more for being so wonderful. Jordan stops her and tells her she isn't who she believes she is. Nina thinks this feeling could linger forever at Sunny's house but she is concerned that they should not have publicly celebrated last night because not everyone would be delighted to find they are getting married. Sunny answers the door and says it's Ava dropping off Avery. Sunny does not want Avery to know anything about them until Ava does. Sunny answers the door, and Avery rushes in to hug Nina. Avery notices Nina's ring very immediately and identifies it as similar to the one her mother used to wear. Sunny and Nina sit down with Avery and inform her of their engagement. Avery inquires about being a flower girl, and they respond that this may be accomplished. Avery exclaims that this is the finest news ever and embraces Nina. Nina asks Ava if she's going to say congratulations before she hurries off to her room to play on her iPad. Ava expresses her congratulations and inquires as to when Sunny proposed. They say it happened yesterday night. She wonders if Carly knows since they need to get ahead of Avery, who will inform everyone. Sunny believes he should approach Carly and speak with her. After Sunny has left, Nina asks Ava what she truly believes. Since she turned in Carly, Ava claims her relationship has been a ticking time bomb. 
Ava informs Al that Carly and Sunny have been through it all for over 20 years, and if Sunny finds out she handed Carly in, it's game over. Nina knows she's sown the seeds of discord in her relationships with Sunny and Willow, so she only has one choice, take the gloves off. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future updates.